there and welcome back to some more Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Today we're continuing on the Let's Play. This is episode 28. In today's episode we are taking a look at the rampages on the West Island as well as this little boat island. They are either really easy or really frustrating and this island there's a lot more really frustrating ones so uh, strap yourselves in. We begin with this one that tasks us to destroy 10 boats with the RPG. This one is bad. Uh, essentially, this one relies a lot on how lucky you get with the way the game spawns boats and also how good you are with tracking targets. The RPG in this game, of course, has no lock-on, unlike in San Andreas where a lock-on RPG is available. So you sort of have to track your targets a little bit, learn the RPG's trajectory. But also, uh, the big issue you've got, I don't know if this is going to be an issue so much on PC, but at least on the console versions, uh, the boats that spawn, spawn quite far away from you, which means they do have a very good chance of just simply popping out. Uh, either when you stop looking at them, or they'll just pop out. So, yeah. Uh, also, if you hit them like that, and then they drive away, they can also drive away out of your sort of vision, and then you won't get the count for blowing up the boat. So, yeah, it is a little bit silly, I'll be honest. I don't like this rampage. Also, getting to it is a little bit bad if you do happen to fail it and also destroy your own vehicle to get out of there, which is something I do recommend if you uh, come close to finishing the time limit. The only way you can get off here is by killing yourself. Yeah, it's just not a good rampage. I did not like this one. It's not my least favourite in this video, as you'll see coming up shortly. But um, yeah, it's not one that I like particularly much. Also, uh, just some quick restating on some Rampage rules. Uh, you get $50 for each Rampage times the amount of Rampages you have completed. So, for example, if you've completed 10 Rampages, you will get $500, I think. That's the way that works. Or $550, sorry, because you'll have completed 11 Rampages by the end of that. I do recommend having full health and armor before attempting all these, just to protect yourself. And as you can see here, I have to blow up my only way out of here. Yeah, I, I got kind of lucky with that Rampage, I'll be honest. Anyways, $850, because of course this is Rampage number 17. So that's the way this works, essentially. Uh, it's a little bit stupid, you don't get paid nearly as much as you probably should do, but that's the way the game works. Number 18 is on this house at East Starfish Island with this Admiral that you pretty much can't steal unless you use the ramp to get out of there. And it tasks you with running over 35 gang members in 2 minutes. This one isn't too bad if you have a decent enough vehicle and uh, sort of get lucky with the way the game spawns pedestrians. Again, 35 is actually quite a decent amount, especially to run over, considering you every time you run someone over, of course, the car loses a little bit of momentum. So if you see a giant group, there is a chance that you'll hit them and, you know, you think you're taking out three at once, but you'll actually only take out one because he'll get hit with the full force of the car and then the other two will just get hit by the car going slightly slower. So it is often better to actually target uh, one pedestrian at a time, but uh, that doesn't really happen because they're gang members and they all group up around each other. Yeah, again, uh, recommend a car which is quite quick. I wouldn't recommend durable for this. Usually I recommend a car that's got some good durability, but to be honest with you, these guys being Cubans, they only have pistols and only a few of them do have pistols. So it's really more about speed, so you can get as much momentum up as possible to hit them with the car. So, uh, I mean, this being Starfish Island, you can use your imagination car-wise. There's plenty of good options available. This thing is what I use, because this thing is one of the best handling cars. And it's also a car that I found on the street. But yeah, that one shouldn't give you too much in the way of troubles. Um, if it does, just get a faster car and just keep hoping. For the best and constantly turn around on yourself because of the game likes to spawn gang members behind you. Moving on to uh, rampage number 19, this is at the Love Juice Stairs where that guy robs you of your money, and this one tasks you to kill 40 gang members in two minutes with the Molotov cocktails. This one I would say is difficult, however, if you've been following along with RLP up to this point, you will now be fireproof, which is why you can run around and do what I'm doing here. Yeah, uh, because as we discussed in the first ever Rampage, the Molotovs are a bit strange to throw, and also if you throw them too close you can of course hit yourself with the backdraft of it. However, if you're fireproof you can use that to your advantage and simply walk up to the Cubans, throw the Molotov, and uh, yeah, just do it this way. 
which I actually think makes it a hell of a lot easier. Do recommend full health and armor, not because of the fact that you're going to set yourself on fire, more for the fact that the police will come after you. So it's best to, yeah, yeah. But again, I do recommend being fireproof for this one. I can't imagine doing this one not being fireproofed. I, I really wouldn't want to imagine that. But uh, yeah, not a too bad of a rampage if you are fireproof. The Molotovs are actually quite fun to use in close distance. Rampage number 20 is at the Vanch Finance Building and tasks you with killing 30 gang members in 2 minutes with the minigun. The minigun in the PS2 version does not have any aim whatsoever. You essentially point it in the direction you wish to fire and then the game will figure out your aim for you. This makes the minigun a bit trash. Uh, don't get me wrong, it can cut people into shreds, but uh, as you can see they dive out of the way and yeah, it is a little bit awful. For this rampage, it's not too bad, but uh, as you're about to see in some later ones, it does get quite bad. On BC, this is a lot better because you do actually have manual aim with the minigun, and I believe you can actually jump around with the minigun as well, unlike in the console version, where it's counted as a heavy weapon, and as a result, uh, you can't jump, you can't sprint with this thing, uh, which makes it all the more awkward. I don't really like the minigun in the PS2 version, I'll be honest. It's pretty good for taking out police helicopters, but pretty much anything the minigun can do, the RPG can do it better, so uh, I wouldn't really recommend it. Anyways, as you can see there, not too bad, and because we've now completed 20 Rampages, we get one, a whole $1,000. Wow. Rampage number 21 is up the downtown stairs, which we use as a ramp several times in the game, and you're tasked with killing 25 gang members in 2 minutes, and this is probably the easiest Rampage in the game. It's certainly the one I enjoy the most. Why? Well, that's simple. The Python is my favourite weapon in this game. It is a one-shot handgun. It will just take people down instantly, and with it being a handgun, you can sprint around with this thing, you could jump with it, you could do pretty much anything you could do with unarmed Tommy Vassetti, but you have this hand cannon that will take people down in one blast. Yeah, it, it's a lot of fun using this Python, and I do recommend the Python quite a lot uh, if you need a weapon in the game. In fact, it's probably the weapon that you're going to see me use quite a lot in the LP. And as you can see there, with time to spare, that Rampage is done. Yeah, the Python is excellent. Rampage number 22 is at the Hyman Memorial Stadium helipads, and it tasks you with setting fire to 30 gang members in two minutes. It's pretty curious that the game tasks you with killing less people with the flamethrower than the Molotovs, and that's because the game probably knows the flamethrower is bad. As in, incredibly bad. There's not that much range on this thing, uh, you can't really set yourself on fire with it, which I guess is a bonus, but unlike the Molotovs, it doesn't have that explosive radius, it's not a set and forget, you sort of have to, uh, yeah, it's just not a very good weapon, I'll be honest, I, I don't like the flamethrower as far as heavy weapons go. Of course, being a heavy weapon, you can't sprint with it, you can jump with it, which is nice, I don't get why you can't jump with the minigun, but you can jump with the flamethrower. And I do recommend jumping with the flamethrower in order to cover as much ground. You'll see me as they're walking around, I'll jump because it is. Uh, you cover more distance by jumping, so uh, bear that in mind. But yeah, it's it's not too bad a rampage. If it tasks you killing more people or in a less populous area, then uh, yeah, it, it probably would be quite bad. But uh, in this case, it isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, I still don't recommend using the flamethrower for anything more than one or two rampages. Rampage number 23 is behind the downtown pizza stack, and it tasks you with killing 35 gang members via drive-by. It's another one of these missions. Once again, do recommend a car with good durability for these because, well, the gang members will fire back. Unlike in the vehicle one where pretty much you can just sort of get and drive off in this one. It is a lot more about making the vehicle the sort of draw of your enemy's fire. That being said, these are still Cubans and they only have one or two pistols between each of them, so uh, they're not too much to worry about. You don't need a car with massive durability. As you can see, I just used this uh, Greenwood, Greenwood Saloon car. You are also using the Uzi, which is one of the better machine pistols in the game. And it's definitely, uh, yeah, a lot better than... One rampage that we'll get to which uses a very curious choice of submachine gun. 
The one thing you do have to worry about a little bit when it comes to this rampage is getting pulled out of your car, so sort of try and keep your momentum going. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad unless you come across a large group of them on both sides of the street, but uh, typically you can usually keep some momentum going in the car so you don't get dragged out of it. They can't run that fast, but if you do get dragged out, then that's just time wasted trying to find another car and so on and so forth. Anyways, as you can see, that Rampage is not too much of a difficult one. Rampage number 24 is at the entrance of the hotel, and it tasks you with killing 30 people with the M60 machine gun. Think of this thing as a minigun, but more usable and slightly less lethal. Uh, this thing does have manual aim equipped on it, which isn't the best, but it'll do. If you crouch, you get a lot less recoil, it can kill people in one shot, which is nice, and uh, that certainly is enough to take out all of these bikers. As usual, using manual aim on a PlayStation, or even the Xbox version probably, is quite awkward because, well, the game, the manual aim is way too sensitive on the PS2 controller, but again, on PC you can fire this thing both by looking down the side of it and also by just using standard manual aim, which makes it a hell of a lot easier. Uh, the bikers aren't particularly lethal, uh, they are once again a pistol wielding gang, half the time they will just run off when you start firing at them, but uh, that one's not too difficult as long as you remember to crouch. Rampage number 25 is in Little Haiti near the Little Red Bridge in this weird sort of back area that this place has and it's to kill 35 gang members with the combat shotgun, one of the more fun weapons in this game, this fully automatic spas shotgun. Uh, can certainly deal one hell of a lot of damage, and especially to these Haitians, who obviously aren't Haitians in this version of the game. And the one nice thing with this Rampage is it puts you, as long as you come back out onto the street, you're in a pretty populated area. Haitians do like to hang around in big groups. I actually found they like to hang around in groups more than Cubans, uh, sort of like to make themselves a little bit more sparse. The Haitians really do like to group up around each other. One thing that is worth noting is if you have completed all of the Cuban and Haitian missions for both Anti Polet and Puerto Robina, uh, the Haitians will fire on you on sight, which can, I guess, make this a little bit harder, but it also means that they might start to gather around you a little bit more, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword there. Personally, I did it while I did not have any beef with the Cubans or the Haitians, which Again, I mean, that just makes things easier for me personally, but if you do want to go ahead and uh, go the route of doing this afterwards, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Speaking of killing Haitians, our rampage number 26 is behind a house in Little Haiti and tasks you with killing 30 gang members with the Tech 9 machine pistol. This is a bit of a strange rampage because uh, this is not a particularly good gun, the Tech 9. Um, it's slow firing, it doesn't deal a lot of damage, it does have a decent magazine capacity, but it's not particularly good. Also to boot, I did try this, um, killing them with drive-by does not work, which would be my go-to tactic, because usually I find that the machine pistols uh, and submachine guns do deal a lot more damage when you're using drive-by, and they fire faster as well, but uh, that did not work in the case of the Tech 9. Also you'll see me shoot the Cubans here, that does not count towards the total, you need to take out the Haitians, because that's what gang uh, it's decided to go. Although this isn't that weird crossover spot between Little Havana and Little Haiti where the Cubans and the Haitians will fight, so you might see uh, a Cuban spawn just trying to get them out of the way until so they don't kill any of your precious Haitian gang members. Uh, yeah, this one, a little bit awkward, I don't particularly like this one. Don't get me wrong, as a weapon, I don't mind the Tech 9 too much. It's not too bad on taking out a singular target, but for taking out a group of targets, it can be quite bad. Also, you, yeah, you see me try to fire on that guy through that guy, and it wasn't really working. Yeah, uh, on the plus side, you can sort of move around and walk around with this weapon, so you can sort of run away while firing, which is kind of nice, but um, yeah, it's not really enough to redeem the weapon. Thankfully, this weapon was improved a hell of a lot, when it came to San Andreas, but in uh, Vice City the Tech 9 was quite a bad gun, which I guess makes sense considering the Tech 9 in real life was just sort of a modified semi 
automatic pistol, which they figured out could be cheaply and easily turned into a fully automatic, so I guess it makes sense that it's not particularly great, but uh, yeah, at least it looks cool, which is something. I almost ran out of time there as well, so uh, yeah, the Sec-9, not a particularly good weapon, that one might take you a few attempts, again, full health and armor, because you will need it when it comes to that, because you'll have to spend a lot of time firing on enemies that are firing back at you. Next up, Rampage number 27 is in this sort of basketball court at the back of Little Havana, and it tasks you with killing 30 gang members with the pump action shotgun. This shouldn't be too difficult. The pump action will more often than not put people down in one shot. It's pretty good, it fires rapidly, there's no need to reload, which is lovely in the terms of this weapon. Uh, the only real issue you'll have is if it does knock people down instead of kill them, but the range is pretty good as well. Uh, the, I find the further they are away, the more chance it's got of just putting a knockdown on them over just killing them all right. But uh, this one should be pretty fun, especially on controller. Uh, with the auto aim and just constantly switching between targets, this one should be quite a lot of fun. Also, you've got a blast radius, so if you get multiple uh, gang members running up on you, uh, it can take out quite a few of them. Again, it could knock some of them down, over kill them all right, as you can see there. But uh, yeah, still not too bad. As you can see, that Rampage is quite a fun one. I do like that one a lot. But you know what I don't like? This Rampage is Rampage number 28. is in a alleyway in Little Havana, and it tasks you with killing 10 people with the Katana. We're back to this again. Yeah, the Katana, which we established before, is not a good weapon for any of these Rampages. Uh, we're doing this. Full health and armor do recommend, and you will die quite a few times, because as much as the Haitians are particularly... Uh, what we'll call lethal, they are lethal enough to you when you're using this weapon because if you come across a group of them, you can't take them out. I got slightly lucky here because they were too busy shooting at the Haitians when I came along, so I guess because they were distracted, they had their back turn, I managed to get a few sneaky kills, but uh, yeah, this one's not particularly good. It's really not very good because you can't actively engage enemies on the ground and you also don't have uh, any form of aiming ability so you can't pick which target you actually want to aim at to kill. Yeah, uh, San Andreas helped this weapon a hell of a lot because you could attack people on the ground with it and stuff but uh, in this case you essentially just have to kick people until they fall over which does take a while. Uh, that made it look a lot easier than it actually is but yeah no those katana rampages are utter utter bollocks. Rampage number 29 is on the roof of the Havana he uh, Hospital. You will need a helicopter to get up there, that's why I was struggling with all those H's. Uh, and it's actually we're gunning down 20 gang members with a sniper rifle. This one, once you figure out how to get onto the roof of the hospital, honestly is not too bad at all. The sniper rifle is always a one-shot kill. Uh, unfortunately, it's the bolt action variant of it this time around, not the semi automatic spammer sniper, which is a shame because I like that weapon a lot. But uh, no, it's just merely the standard bolt action. You can hop down if you like to uh, get a better view of the targets and engage them on the ground because, again, the Cubans aren't particularly what you'd call lethal. So if you do decide to jump down and take them out from the ground, uh, it shouldn't be too bad. But uh, I, I've managed to do it from up here pretty well. Um, as you can see, there is a slight issue with hit scans on these weapons, especially when <laughs> Cubans are being ran into, which is interesting. I, I have no idea what was wrong there, but yeah, some of them can't be taken out for reasons. But yeah, no, this one isn't too bad. Just if you ever get to a point where you don't see any Cubans in your scope, just simply do what I did there, which is sort of push it up towards the sky, give the game time to load in another group for you, and then you can just take out that entire group. Except from one, usually this guy that runs, and you do have to leave your shot on running targets. I usually find it's not really worth it. You're better off just trying to look for a new group to take out. But yeah. This Rampage, not particularly bad at all. The Sniper Rifle is a very good weapon, very lethal weapon, and uh, as long as you have the helicopter to get up there, you shouldn't have an issue with it. Package, no, uh, package? Rampage number 30 is on top of a building along with package number 84. You probably saw this in the Hidden Packages episode. Uh, this one tells you killing 20 gang members in two minutes with the Kruger, which is a very, very good weapon, and yeah, can take them out in one to two shots pretty easily. It is, unfortunately, 
manual aim only, well that shouldn't be too much of an issue. I decided to hop now in this case to take these people out, but uh, yeah, killing 20 of these people with this weapon, not an issue at all. The only thing you really have to worry about is uh, police attention, as you can see here. But uh, yeah, not too bad at all. It's even easier on PC where you get the option to manual aim it while you're on foot, which is nice. You don't have to aim down the scope and deal with recoil. So this one is incredibly easy on PC, but in terms of the console version, it's not too bad either. Just be prepared for that overly sensitive aim. Although thankfully they also will run towards you if you're on the ground. Uh, in order to get a better shot of you or kick you in the face like that guy did so uh, that makes them a hell of a lot easier to take out so yeah there you go pretty easy and straightforward rampage I do quite like that one rampage number 31 I had a bit of issue with this one this is on a boat in vice port and it challenges you to take out 15 vehicles in two minutes this one unlike boat island is a little bit better because well you're not taking out boats you don't have to lead your shot so much the issue I found with this one is it is very RNG related because the game does not like to spawn new vehicles particularly. Um, unless you're in some form of police action, which is essentially the key to these rampages. But uh, yeah, there's not all that much in the way to take out. You don't get a lot of parked vehicles around here to take out. And once you've taken out your own vehicle and basically anything that initially spawns, which is usually about 7 or 8 vehicles, you're now just sort of trapped here. And until the police show up and you've got to rely on the fact that enough police officers are going to show up. I do recommend taking out some civilians to see if you can get any more police attention but as you can see here you know I go through several seconds of not having any vehicles to shoot at whatsoever which does make this very awkward. I did fail this one quite a few times and also the other issue is of course because you are laden with just an RPG if a police car approaches you and comes very close to you you have no option but to blow yourself up uh, which is not ideal I, I do recommend full health and armor be, so you can actually uh, deal with when a cop does that uh, but even still you need to be prepared for that happening a few times I do actually get two blow ups on that cop car though uh, the game does have a bit of a weird glitch sometimes where the car gets blown up twice not I, I'm not quite sure how that works out but it, it does so yeah I wasn't gonna argue with it as you can see here take out the ambulance try and take out a few more of these Cubans uh, try to look for the helicopter in the sky and I was starting to get worried here because this is the way my last few attempts had gone where I was just waiting for cars forever thankfully though uh, two cars spawned right in front of me and that's the end of that thankfully that was a pretty bad rampage, although if I knew what was coming up later, I wouldn't have dreaded that rampage at all. Next one is a rampage that sounds hard on paper, but it actually isn't too bad. It's killing 35 gang members with the grenade. It spawns at this sort of vice point motel. Uh, grenades are awkward, they're like Molotov cocktails, where essentially your throwing abilities on these are either throw them directly at your feet, or throw them as far away from you as humanly possible. There's no real uh, counterpoint to that. One good thing though is the game is spawning you Cubans once again because the game seems to hate Cubans. And uh, the good thing with Cubans is they like to spawn in groups. So you can just simply lob a grenade right at their feet which is nice. Um, I guess it's more about getting lucky with the way Cubans spawn. You can do what I did there, which is sort of drop it at their feet and run away, or try and hit them at longer ranges. Although you do definitely need to learn the basics of how a grenade does its trajectory. Uh, one thing worth pointing out is they don't really seem to react to you throwing a grenade at their feet, and they also don't seem to react to their fellow comrades having a grenade thrown at their feet. So uh, yeah, bear that one in mind, unless they're very close to each other. But yeah, this one isn't too bad, and again, the nice thing with the grenades is you can sprint around with these like you could if you were unarmed, which does make it a lot easier in that regard. But uh, yeah, still a little bit of an awkward rampage, this one might take a few attempts. Full health and armour, so you can suppress the explosions when they happen, but eventually you will get that one done. There's no easy way to deal with that rampage. Rampage number 33 is inside the airport terminal and it tasks you with killing 25 gang members with the combat shotgun. This one is another fun one because the combat shotgun is very good. And you know what's even better about this one is you're inside an interior. Which means you can take the people out even easier because they're even closer range than they would be normally. The combat shotgun has a decent amount of range. 
but inside a building this thing really comes alive. As usual, can kill people in a minimum amount of shots, the reload's good, it's fully automatic so you can take out large groups uh, very easily. The only thing you have to worry about a little bit is the auto aim being slightly weird with the banisters or railings on the upstairs floor. I don't really recommend going upstairs, I recommend staying down here in this lobby, but uh, yeah, it's not too bad, it has to be said, and uh, yeah, pretty straightforward, easy rampage there for you to complete. Moving on to rampage number 34, which is on the roof of the terminal, again, helicopter to get up here, although I believe there's also a stun jump uh, that you can go ahead and use, make sure to not get crushed by your own helicopter as it falls to the ground. This one tells you we're killing 12 vehicles in 2 minutes with the RPG, and this one isn't quite as bad as the last few destroy vehicles. There's a lot less vehicles to destroy and also the airport does have a decent amount of traffic flowing through it. One thing I will recommend is as much as it is safer to be on the roof, I do recommend getting off the roof so that the game will spawn more vehicles and you can get a better line of sight on them. As you can see there, uh, the game does spawn a decent amount of vehicles and eventually after blowing up a fair few vehicles you'll start attracting some police attention. Again there's some Cuban gang members around as well if you want to go ahead and fire on those in order to get yourself a little bit more police attention, but essentially this one, like the Vice Port one, basically relies on you taking out uh, police vehicles as they show up more than traditional traffic vehicles, because traffic vehicles don't seem to show up particularly when you are inside of a police chase. As you can see there as well, I was dealing with the world's most solid lamppost, which had fallen down and gone in my line of fire, which wasn't so good, but eventually uh, that would finally blow up. And now, yeah, as you can see, we're only down to three vehicles on the last minute. These ones, I feel like they really depend on how much destruction you can get done while the game acts normally until you get into like one of these sort of police chase situations. Uh, maybe it'd be advisable to have police on you before you start the rampage, although I think that would make it more difficult with them firing on you. And also, there's no guarantee that you're going to get any more attention. But as you can see here, I was on very low health and decided to risk myself to complete the rampage. If you do die upon completing the rampage, it shouldn't be too bad. However, speaking of too bad, we come to rampage number 35. The final rampage destroyed 15 vehicles in 2 minutes with the minigun. We've discussed previously why the minigun is quite bad. Uh, there is no manual aim, there's no aim of any description on PS2 and we've discussed why vehicle rampages are bad because it relies on the game spawning a good number of vehicles which it will do initially but once you start getting police attention and blow up a fair few vehicles it won't. This one was awful, truly awful. Anyone who came out to the live stream uh, when we did these rampages We'll know how bad this got. Yeah, essentially by the end of it I just ended up drinking upon death and got heavily drunk uh, because I died about five or six times during this. So yeah, um, just, just persevere through this one because it is very very tragic this minigun rampage. I, I did not enjoy this at all in the slightest. The worst bit is in San Andreas this would have been 8th because the minigun has an ability to aim and is more lethal. But in this game, it, it just isn't. One advantage of the minigun is there's no delay on fire, you can just constantly fire it. But a bad thing is you can't move around particularly well when you have this thing in your hand. You can't jump, which means you can't jump into new areas. You essentially just have to walk around and hope the game spawns a decent amount of vehicles for you to take out. Also, you've got to bear in mind that you're going to get punched in the face by Cubans because they get angry at you blowing up vehicles for whatever reason. And, uh, yeah, also when the helicopter shows up, the minigun likes to auto-aim up towards the helicopter, which isn't too good because it can't take out the helicopters particularly well. I, I hate that rampage. Either way, when you complete all the rampages, you get $1,000, which is less than you've been getting previously. Yeah. Also, in case you are wondering, after you complete all the rampages, you get nothing. There is, there is no benefit to completing all the rampages, you get no items, you don't get anything, you just get slightly more money. So that was a bit of a waste of time, but uh, at least we had some fun and also some absolute hell when it comes to certain rampages. 
I'm not a fan of the rampages in this game, I'll be honest, and that's why I'm pleased they never returned in San Andreas. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching this edition of the Grand Theft Auto Vice City Let's Play. I do hope you've enjoyed. Next time, we are going to be taking a look at some petty store robberies, which would be a hell of a lot more fun. Join us for that. Thank you all very much for watching, and until then, farewell. Let it go.